Okay, so while I'm farming echoes, I want to talk about a very, very important question I got from one of my friends. Quite a few people have been messaging me on various social platforms about my opinion of watering waves and whether or not it's a free-to-play friendly gacha game. Now, I'm in a very unique position to give my opinion on this because, of course, I'm not interacting with the gacha system, so I literally have no other characters than the ones that you get for free, even skip by G. So there have been quite a few people asking me whether they should play it or not if they don't want to spend some money. So I thought, you know what? Maybe I should make a video about it so that I could just post it on my YouTube channel. Now, of course, I want to preface this video by saying that with the game just being out for less than a week, maybe six days, I personally think that it's a bit too early to cast judgment on whether or not the game is free to play friendly. But I'm gonna be giving you guys my opinion on it as a player who hasn't pulled a single character now let's start off by talking about the most obvious thing in the world that people even forget sometimes for how obvious it is being free to play friendly is not necessarily being not pay to win i want you guys to know that you could be a very free to play friendly game but still be pay to win inherently gacha games all of them no matter how good they are, no matter how free-to-play friendly they are, we cannot deny that they are a very, very predatory and pay-to-win system, okay? Okay, now being a free-to-play friendly gacha game is quite a subjective opinion. There are other people that are saying that FGO is a fine game and it's definitely playable as a free-to-play player, even though that game doesn't even have a pity system while others who hate hoyovers absolutely swear on their life that genshin impact and honkai star rail is super not free to play friendly so i think the most important thing to do if you're trying to find out if a game is free to play friendly or not is just try out the game and see it for yourself but i know you guys didn't click on the video to just hear a cookie cutter answer so i'm gonna give you guys some reasons as to why i think watering waves might be the most free-to-play friendly gacha game in 2024 keep in mind that this could change at any point of time in the future especially if they implemented new systems that just absolutely destroy the free to play friendliness of the game but let's start it with launch rewards and extra compensation due to performance issues in the game now i know everybody already knows this watering waves are released in a very very bad state according to other people for myself i haven't really had massive issues the game has been running fine on my pc and on my phone since launch but i'm not gonna invalidate other people's experiences on the bugs and things because i have seen clips of the bugs and they're very real so there is a part of the community that just cannot play the game but because of that we got tons and tons of rewards i'm gonna open my backpack right now and show you guys i haven't pulled yet so most of these things most of these wishes are just rewards altogether we got 89 lustrous tides that's the standard banner pulls and 22 of the special banner pulls keep in mind that we also still have our login event right now ongoing where i could get two more here and and i could also get another 15 more standard pulls here they also gave away a free five star for everyone who was playing not just any five star though a five star selector so you could pick any one of the five standard characters i actually picked john shin as my five star because i thought that she's gonna be the most all rounder of the five with me not interacting with the gacha system i think john shin was the best pick overall for me but of course no matter who you picked you cannot deny that they gave us a free five star for essentially not getting to play the game for two the two days three days now that alone might be enough for some people to say that the game is absolutely free to play friendly but i think you guys are still forgetting one of the most important things here we're also getting novice convenes here um discounted pulls we're also getting after that another selector theoretically you could get three five stars at the start of the game which is an absolute absolute massive help but even without the five stars i think the game is 
very very good still especially on the four star character category they have absolutely fantastic four star characters i've seen a lot of people loving danjin morteffi is one of the best supports in the game and even sanhua some people are saying sanhua is a better glacio dps than lin yang which is the lion boy five star standard character like i said i haven't pulled on the game so i know that this game has absolutely great starter characters chishia especially is absolutely underrated i haven't seen enough appreciation for chishia yang yang is such a good crowd control character and even the mc i'm actually surprised that a gacha game gave their mc a playable kit the mc right now is one of the best characters in the game even china thinks that <laughs> The main character is the best DPS right now, which is absolutely crazy. I don't know if I believe it because I haven't really tried the other characters. But I mean, I just completed the game without pulling. I've completed all story content. I'm almost done with every single quest in the game. I think I'm only going to be needing to finish Gian's story quests. And I've had zero, absolutely nada, literal zero urge to pull for a character because of this mc this mc is just so good both of her forms spectro and havoc mc is absolutely playable the spectro mc has a healing side bonus right there so it's a very good sub dps and the havoc mc does absolutely massive damage especially paired with the havoc set here i'm gonna show you guys this is gonna be pretty good I'm gonna ult right here without any buffs or anything. Bam, 19k. That's just too OP, man. Now, I know what you're gonna say if you're a Genshin lover. That's also possible in Genshin. That's also possible in Honkai Star Rail. And I'm agreeing with you on that. That's why I think Honkai Star Rail and Genshin Impact are great free-to-play friendly gacha games. And while sure, you may be incentivized to pull for brand new characters in Genshin Impact because of how cool they look, that still doesn't really change the fact that you could complete the game with just Shang Ling, with just the four stars in the game. And with Watering Wave's power being more skill-based than character-based, I think it's even more free-to-play friendly than the Hoyoverse games. My number two point in watering waves being a very free-to-play friendly game is the developer kuru games if you don't know is the developer of the game and they have been historically a very generous company in regards to their rewards i don't know if you guys have played pgr but punishing gray raven is their last gacha game and in that game you can theoretically pull every single character in the game every single brand new character in the game if you plan it properly i played that game for about five or six months and i remember maining the very first character that you could get just because the gameplay the combat is so good that i had absolutely zero urge to pull for any other character in the game however if you look at the gameplay of the other characters they're absolutely crazy as well it's been such an underrated game that i think most of these people in the wider gacha space has been taken into surprise by how good watering waves is because of that if you also played the pgr then you'll know that they give out characters like candy they love handing out rewards every single time a new event is going on they've always been very generous very very receptive to player feedback and if you look patch by patch you're gonna see how it affects their game they take player feedback very seriously and right now in watering waves it's showing less than three days from the release of the game they've already released more than like what, five ten patches on the game just for just for optimizations and while of course they're still a company they're still a business first and foremost they're gonna be wanting your money i don't see them changing their company philosophy that quickly so i have very very high hopes that watering waves gets the same treatment as punishing gray raven right now they have an event going on that if you finish a certain amount and get a certain amount of the currency you could get echoes or gear with main stats of your choice and if you've played pgr they've been doing that since the dawn of time they love hunting out gear like that so i'm gonna be very curious if 
that translates into echo rewards in watering waves 11k damage oh my god my third and final point in this discussion is the amount of power creep that this game is gonna get if you have a history in hoyoverse games then you're probably used to building up two teams for abyss in this game the end game needs three main teams well of course the teams only have three characters per team but that's still nine characters one more character than hsr or in genshin with three teams being needed for endgame that means power creep is gonna be much more slower than what we're used to an example is that verina the only healer in the game right now is gonna be needing three healers to come out before even being absolutely power crept and that translates to every single role in the game dps's sub dps's supports it's gonna take way longer for power creep to settle in and even if your character gets power creep i want you guys to remember that this game is still more skill based than character based right now i'm completely fine with only having three characters built up right now and while sure i may not be able to fully star the tower of adversity because i only have one team at the end of the day that's like what an extra 200 300 asteroid per month it may be a personal thing but for me it isn't really that worth it to be stressed about that because essentially it's basically just an extra pull every month extra pull extra two pulls and i don't know about you but that's not worth stressing over oh right i almost forgot my friends also wanted me to show you how many asteroids i have and how many pulls i have i think i already opened my backpack once here but i'm gonna show it to you again i have 15,832 uh asteroid 89 lustrous tides and 22 pulls keep in mind that i only have 54 percent exploration here 73 73 73 78 63 58 81 66 74 i'm not even close to 100 percent i still have like what 2000 3000 more asteroid that i haven't really gotten from the exploration but yeah personally i think watering waves is a very very free-to-play friendly game of course at the end of the day i still think that you guys should play it for yourself and see if i'm correct or if any of your favorite content creators are correct because at the end of the day you should be trusting your own opinions more than anything else and watching a content creator's video about it doesn't really give the same experience as just doing it the game is free but yeah boys i'm gonna be ending the video right there hope you guys like the video don't forget to subscribe to follow me on twitch twitch.tv slash i'm gonna see you guys in the next video peace out